My name is Marina Mahade. I spent a few years working and all that and I, I guess I didn't realise I was collecting a lot of skills. And finally in 1993, I was invited to uh, head the Malaysian AIDS Foundation as chairman of the Board of Trustees. It was a long battle but it, it really made me grow. I think I was there for 12 years and the me in the beginning and the me at the end was not the same. I've met so many uh, women who've inspired me, really, really, you know. Um, but I think I start at home and I, I, I really start with my mother, uh, who, you know, she's just a 90, which is already incredible, but, you know, she went through the war and then she went to study medicine and struggled through it and eventually, you know, passed and then got married to my father and then found, you know, herself on this trajectory which she never expected uh, for him to become Prime Minister and then all the challenges that come with that, with working and she worked all the way until uh, she retired and bringing up children and everything. You know, I, I really think that it's, it's, it's a story of every woman in, in one way but it's also uh, the story of a special woman because obviously not everyone becomes the wife of a prime minister. Um, so I, I really take my head off uh, to to her in, in many ways. Malaysian women have been always been pretty advanced, you know. Uh, we are educated. The universities are 60-70% female. Um, there are women in all sorts of positions. Uh, until recently, governor of the central bank, we've had women ministers, doctors are plenty who are women, lawyers, whatever. So on, on that level, I think um, education-wise and all that, it's not a problem. But then you get into the more subtle means of, of um, uh, oppressing women. For instance, uh, and this is government statistics, they say that 40% of the female graduates from the universities don't even enter the workforce. So there's still a lot of work to be done. Um, and, um, and, and there are many issues which are unfortunately um, being justified uh, in the name of religion. Um, and that makes our work so much uh, more difficult. Uh, child marriage, for instance. Uh, even violence, of uh, domestic violence, for instance, um, all these things are being excused uh, with religious, so-called religious uh, justification, and and that's hard um, to to overcome uh, when when people think that talking about religion, you know, is only limited to certain people, only limited to men, that sort of thing. Even in so-called um, democratic countries, uh, you have to look at uh, with a more gendered perspective and you have to look at how women are treated. Uh, even in very democratic countries, for instance, in the US, there's high level of violence against women. So you cannot consider it a, a perfect country in that way, you know. So everything needs to be looked uh, in that way. And I think the future of Malaysia, unfortunately, cannot be divorced from the politics because the politics sets the tone, um, it decides which way we go and, and all that. Um, I, I usually have a lot of faith in young people uh, because they are still fresh, they are energetic, they are passionate and we had so much hope, we have so much potential uh, but I think we are kind of losing it and I think the trouble is a lot of Malaysians take a lot of things for granted and we don't see the example of other countries which used to be ahead of us and then found themselves behind. I think people have to realise, Malaysians have to realise that nothing stays constant and I think stays constant that, that things can change and things can change overnight and you have to be alert and aware all the time and otherwise you know you wake up one morning and everything has changed. A Malaysian is really someone who who is so used to seeing this diversity around us 
that that we we take it for granted and we don't realize this until we go somewhere which seems more um, monocultural or something and I give the example for me it was very stark because I used to live in Japan and for me it was very strange to be in a country where everyone looked pretty much the same uh, spoke the same language and sometimes in fashion also they all wear the same thing you know and and I used to when I come back from Japan for holidays it, it was I, I used to describe it as going from black or white movie to a color movie you know because you come back and like oh such a variety of food such a variety of faces such a variety of languages that you hear it's something we don't realize until we go overseas as a woman well in, in many ways, I, I feel blessed that I was born here as a woman because of course I have opportunities that are not readily available to many women elsewhere. And I've, I've traveled uh, to various countries, where there's other developing countries and, and like, okay, you know, I, I, I'm, I'm lucky I can go to school, I can drive, I can achieve whatever I want even with all the problems you know so i'm and i've had good role models to to follow and and all that so i i think you know i can be proud i'm a malaysian woman and and we can hold our head high when we go overseas and that sort of thing i'm very happy to be malaysian and and a woman gosh I, <laughs> i'm not sure i could be anything else <laughs>